Patcher allows you to create and save complete instrument and effect chains for use in later projects. It's also excellent for creating dashboards to control your favourite plugins. Patcher can be loaded as an instrument or effect, so let's see how to work with Patcher. The first thing to note is that you can click and drag on the borders of the interface to expand the workspace. To add instruments and effects, you can right click on the workspace to select from the favourites pop-up lists. But I like to open the plugin picker since it allows you to drag and drop, which can be handy as I'll show you in a moment. The blue lines represent events, that's MIDI or note data, and the yellow lines are audio. One nice feature of the audio is you can change the volume by dragging along the link. Next I'll add an effect, and here's where the drag and drop method from the plugin picker is useful. By dropping the effect on a plugin, it will be added after it in the audio chain. I'll add another plugin instrument, Citrus. So let's talk about making manual links. When you click on a node, the compatible locations show in green. Notice the hint shows the current node's name and type. However, if you drag the connection to the middle of the destination object, FL Studio in this case, you'll be given a pop-up list of all the possible connections. Here they're mixer tracks. I'll select mixer track 1. I'll also add a third party VST plugin, Contact. Notice the plugin doesn't have an interface image. To fix this, you'll need to create a plugin thumbnail before using it with Patcher. Create a thumbnail by loading the plugin in a channel as normal. And select from the plugin wrapper, Make Editor Thumbnail. That saves the thumbnail to the database. Now, before I can use that, I'll need to restart Patcher. So I don't lose any work, now's a good time to show you how to save and load Patcher presets. From the Patcher wrapper, select Save Preset As and give it a name. I'll just overwrite this one. I'll clean up the project and reload Patcher from the browser. Select Plugin Presets, Generators, Patcher and drag and drop your preset on the channel window or mix a track depending on what you made it for. Getting back to where we left off, now that I've made an editor thumbnail for the third party VST, it's available for use in Patcher. Excellent. Notice we have a MIDI and a main output on this plugin. In terms of audio outputs, I know this is a multi output plugin. So I can select outputs, audio, and activate all. Now I have a bunch of separate audio channels I can link to FL Studio or other plugins. Mixer tracks 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Editor interfaces. The quickest way to open a plugin is to double click it. This opens the editors tab. You can see it's a rack full of plugins in the patcher preset. These arrows can be used to minimize the interfaces. Also useful are the arrows that can be used to access the plugin presets. Notice this one is a VST and has the normal VST settings that are found on a plugin wrapper. Automation. So, what about automation? FL Studio native plugins and VSTs behave differently inside Patcher. Let's take a look. First, FL Studio native plugins. Before the interface controls are available, they need to be activated. To do this for FL Studio native plugins, right click the control and select Activate. Now the standard Create Automation Clip, Edit Events and Link to Controller are available. I'll link this one to my controller. Done. For VSTs, right click the plugin on the map window, then select the Parameters option and a target control to activate it. I'll select main volume. Then you can right click the node and select the usual automation options. Dashboard. 
Another thing Patcher is useful for is creating dashboards for your favourite plugins. Dashboards expose the controls that you add for direct access. Here I'll add a control and link it to the pluck parameter on Harmless. And now I can drag and drop the connection onto the middle of the plugin and select the target I want to link it to. This activates the control. The same process works with VSTs. Add a control, drag and drop on the interface, select one, and then link to it. Now the dashboard has an XY controller and a knob. So as I did previously, you can save your preset and it will be available for future projects. With that, you should be ready to build your own massive patcher presets for use in future projects. Why am I scared?